Well, this is interesting. The React team is no longer recommending having us write SPAs, a single page applications rendering client side only. If you look at the new React docs that were just released today, there is a section here on getting started with React that really stuck out to me. So I tweeted this, whoa, the React team doesn't recommend using React client side only as SPA anymore. And that tweet, you know, it was just a few hours ago is going viral. This is hot, hot off the press. So if you look at starting a new React project, you'll notice that they don't show create React tab here at all, which is surprising. I mean, create React app was the default way to get started for a very long time. And that is now gone. And now you see right here, production grade React frameworks next. JS, Remix, Gatsby, kind of surprised Gatsby is here and not something like Astro, but anyways, and then Expo for native apps. So yeah, right here, this is the way that they're saying you should get started with React now, which is, uh, that's a pretty hot take. Um, a little surprised to see this coming from the React team. Uh, and, and you might be asking, you know, where is the existing SPA, the existing way that everybody's, you know, thought of React as being just a view framework is now hidden inside of this. Can I use React without a framework? So it's hidden down here. Let's dive into this a little bit, and then we'll go back to the tweet thread and maybe we'll do a little bit of reaction because some of those tweets are, they're pretty interesting, but yeah, let's, let's take a look at this. So you can definitely use React without a framework and that's how you use React for a part of your page. However, if you're building a new app or a site fully with React, we recommend using a framework. Basically, yeah, they're saying, hey, if you're starting a new project today, use one of these frameworks. Here's why they go into it. It's, it's a pretty big wall of text. We'll get through some of this. Even if you don't need routing or data fetching at first, you'll likely want to add some libraries for them. As your JavaScript bundle grows with every new feature, you might need I have to figure out how to split code for every route individually. But yeah, code splitting. I mean, React apps generally in the wild, people are NPM installing a ton of stuff and performance gets pretty poor. So they're splitting out packages. So you don't load all of that code initially. But anyways, as your data fetching needs get more complex, you're likely to encounter server client network waterfalls that make your app feel very slow. And I don't know, it just seems like this whole thing is in back all the backlash on Twitter and whatnot about React apps being slow in the React um, ecosystem. It feels like a pretty direct response to that. I know they've been working on this, these docs for a really long time. So maybe it has nothing to do with that recent backlash, but anyways, let's keep going. So as your audience includes more users with poor network conditions, and low end devices, you might need to generate HTML from your components to display content early, either on the server or during the build time, changing your setup to run some of your code on the server. These are not problems that are React specific. This is why Svelte has Svelkit, Vue as Nuxt, and so on. To solve these problems on your own, you'll need to integrate your bundler with the router and with your data fetching library. It's not hard to get an initial setup working, but there are lots of subtleties involved that make an app that loads quickly, even as it grows over time. So I don't know, It you can go and read the rest of this. I mean, and then way down here, they link to, you know, beat or parcel. So that's kind of the state of the art, I guess, if you want to do React SPAs, but I don't know, it just, you know, my opinions are not <laughs> that of my employers, even though, I run front of the masters, but anyways, it it just seems like they're kind of punting the problem of like performance and everything to these other frameworks. And yeah, they definitely, you know, solve some of these problems, but I don't know, maybe, maybe this is really the answer. Anyways, let's, let's go to the community's reaction on this. This first one, just <laughs> the V in SSR. Yeah. I mean, you, you remember react was always the V in MVC when it first came out and yeah, now it's the V and SSR. And then, yeah, she was surprised that 
you know, the create React app is no longer maintained, but, you know, Vite is handy setup. So yeah, a lot of people like Vite. They're having success building React apps with Vite. And, but yeah, this one I quote tweeted because you've got to find it under here. <laughs> Just like, that's some wall text. <laughs> Honestly, I think the developer community is like, is pretty good humored about a lot of this stuff. Let's take a look at some of these other responses. They're extending the ecosystem and supporting the community. <laughs> it's a nice take. The React team says a lot of stuff. It's usually walked back within a year. It's fair. They should change the library for UI creation to a library for framework creation. We're living in a new era of, of front end framework every week with React as a core. Yeah, I mean, even I feel like in a lot of ways, a lot of these frameworks are kind of modeled after React. They might have different mechanisms for reactivity like solid JS or the different execution model that quick has, but they all kind of look like react these days. And then, wow, we've got a pretty long debate here with the man himself, Guillermo ranch from Vercel next, obviously he stands a lot to gain from next being the default way to use react. But yeah, somebody's saying this is just silly. If you're building a dashboard app, behind a login SSR only adds lots of complexity for no benefit at all. What happened to me at the last company I worked at after I suggested we moved more logic to the server? Oh no, I shouldn't be laughing at this. I'm sorry, man, that you lost your job, but yikes. React was always a joke to mock naive devs. It's like, trying to drive a car from the outside. JS is extremely powerful and simple to implement anything these days. I actually agree. I agree with this part, but corporate propaganda wants to get their piece of JS with their horrible libraries, which we all all end up in a big mess. Um, it's a little bit too hot take of me to fully agree with, but I get the spirit of it. So I grabbed my cup of coffee this morning. I take a look at my Twitter and wow, this, tweet is still going super strong. Lots of discussion from people I respect, as well as Dan Abramov himself actually replied with clarifications on how the React team sees it. So let's take a look at it. All right, Dan says, I'd say it's not exactly that. It's more that client side only is a special case of static generation, where you bail out of static generation for a part of your tree. By the way, why? Can't really hurt to render some HTML. So I totally get the spirit of that. I, I mean, the why is obviously you have to run node and, and render the HTML. It's additional complexity, but they're recommending this is the approach you take. So I, I imagine most teams are going to start to do this. Many modern frameworks do static generation these days. That's correct. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. It's been a fun type of video to make. Let me know if you like this type of video, I can certainly make some more uh, reaction content in the future. Uh, let me know in the comments. See you later. Peace.